At the beginning of Edge of Eternity, the German family, who we've been following through Fall of Giants and Winter of the World, are living in Berlin, and one morning in August 1961, they wake up to find that a wall has been built across the middle of their city. So our family is trapped. This is a piece of the Berlin Wall. It's made of reinforced concrete, weighs two tons, it's L-shaped, and it's that shape so that if you drive a heavy vehicle into it, you still couldn't knock it down. Fall of Giants and Winter of the World each have at their center a conventional war. And Edge of Eternity is a bit different because the Cold War was not a conventional war. There was very rarely a sort of eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball confrontation between two armies. That made it more difficult to write because I had to draw all those threads together. In the second half of the 20th century, the world was divided into two armed camps. The capitalists, led by the Americans, and the communists, led by the Russians. The great symbol of that division was the Berlin Wall. And here it is, gone. Researching the Berlin Wall for Edge of Eternity was quite difficult because I needed to know exactly how people got across. The suspense is all about the details. How high is the wall? What's it made of? People tried all kinds of things. Tunnels, crashing the barriers, uh, smuggling themselves in meat trucks. One guy went to a theatrical costumier's in East Berlin and bought an American uniform and just walked through Checkpoint Charlie. As the years went by, the wall became more difficult to cross. There was a wide no man's land with tank traps and watchtowers with men with machine guns. I was much helped by a book which details every person who was killed trying to cross the Berlin Wall. I studied all of those real life examples and drew the details from all of that for my fictional attempts to escape. Edge of Eternity, uh, like all novels, is about the characters and their hopes and fears. As I do the, the real imaginative work, which is creating the lives of these fictional characters, the history of real events becomes the background against which their own lives are played out. So I have to fix on something that serves to draw these things together. Or perhaps it's a character who is involved in each of a number of crises. Or perhaps it's an issue that keeps raising its head again and again. But there has to be a very clear storyline that goes through these world crises, these wars and these threats of war, and makes sense of all of them. And sometimes it takes me a while to find that. It happens all the time that I have an idea for a way in which the story can develop, and I find that that just can't happen because it conflicts with real events at the time. And I just have to accept that. It's occasionally infuriating, but I think on balance, much better not to violate history, much better to be able to say to the reader, what you read of history in this novel is true history. East Germany was a strongly repressed country. The secret police, which was called the Stasi, was the most extensive secret police force ever. For example, the Nazis had about one informer for every 2,000 members of the population. The Stasi had one informer for every 60. This meant that everybody in East Germany knew that just about everything they did was watched. In the early 60s, the Stasi built a new headquarters building. In Edge of Eternity, there are several scenes set in Stasi headquarters. And I visited the building to get a sense of what it must have been like. Chapter one of Edge of Eternity, Rebecca is summoned to this building, an invitation which in a secret police state is absolutely terrifying. It felt very intimidating. It felt scary. I just think, as soon as you walked into that building, you would just throw up with terror. By 1989, my German family, like so many real-life German families, is split 
They can't see their parents, brothers and sisters, children on the other side. The Soviet Union seemed to be weakening and the East German regime was losing its grip. But we didn't really understand that. So when it happened on the 9th of November, 1989, when finally people crossed that wall in thousands, it actually came as a terrific shock. And those crowds who gathered that evening, they didn't know how the day was going to end. It could very easily have ended with them all being machine gunned. It had happened before. And they stood there shouting at the guards, let us cross. The fall of the wall symbolized the end of the Cold War, this terrible period when the two armed camps of the world were sort of nose to nose with their nuclear bombs in their hands. What's left of the wall, the longest stretch, is called the East Side Gallery, and sections of that concrete monstrosity have been given to artists to paint. It's a kind of exuberant expression of freedom. This was given to me as a gift on my 65th birthday by my German publishers, Lübe, because the wall is such an important barrier in Edge of Eternity. It stops people doing what they want to do and it symbolizes the repression of Eastern Europe. And it's been painted with the image from the cover of the German translation of Edge of Eternity. I've lived with this trilogy for seven years and it's actually been seven years of pretty hard work because I underestimated the amount of time I needed and I told people I'd write the trilogy in seven years and I should have said nine. So for much of the last seven years I've been working Saturdays and Sundays and working long hours because I didn't want to disappoint people. Because so all these books are written by me. Granddad, you've written a lot of books. Well, except that it's the same book in different languages. French and German and Dutch and Italian. Is it Russian? That? I think it's Russian. That's me when I was, I was a bit younger when I wrote this book. Wasn't I handsome when I was a young man? Uh. <laughs> I looked like a movie star, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit weird. A little bit weird? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, this bookshelf contains uh, one copy of every edition of each of my books. I look at it and uh, I think this is how I've spent my life.